to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podcast, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast, if you're nasty. Oh, yeah. I, I am your host for today. Mike, the fantasy hitman, all right? I'm joined by my best friend, Jason What's Moore. What's up, best friend? How's What's going uh, on, man? Just, how's your just, morning going? Oh, just two besties, you know, besting around. Yeah, I mean, what do best friends do? Mock draft. That's yes. what we, That's what's the best. You get your best friends together, you're like, let's talk some football. Andy Holloway, our fearless leader, is off celebrating his wedding anniversary, so we said, oh, okay, that's a pretty good... Uh, that's a pretty good reason to not be on the show. So we are currently joined by the cardboard bear extraordinaire, Jay Grizz. <laughs> yes, thank you for <laughs> thank you for being here, Jay Grizz. He's just going to hang out for a little bit. But as Jason said, today is a mock draft show, and it is a special mock mm-hmm. draft show because usually you hear our thought process on on picks, breaking down our draft strategy. But this one. We are going with a predetermined draft strategy heading into it. Jason is going to take a running back heavy approach, and which I'm- is, I think, good for this year. Like I, I, I've had, you know, we always say stay water, um, mm-hmm. and you know, talk about letting the draft come to you. But as I have let the draft come to me so far this year, there's been a lot of times where I go RB heavy early. And I will be taking a zero RB, perhaps a modified zero RB type of approach. And we'll see how the teams shake out. I mean, we'll put it up for the Foot Clan. They can vote on who they like uh, or whose team they like more. You can follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. If you want to follow Jason for all of his incredible insights at Jason FFL, I am at FF Hitman. And you know what? Hey, are you on the Instagram? You're doing the the old the old pictures? Check us out. We are on there as well. Fantasy footballers. If you want to watch the show, which the mock draft, we will have uh, the board up showing you know who's available and those things if you want to follow along. YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Jason, the quick question of the day comes from Instagram. Trevor wants to know what is something simple you can do to take your fantasy football performance to the next level? It's a great question because everyone get every single fantasy football player at some point asks this question to themselves. If they're new and they go, what, what, what's something simple I could do to take it to the next level? I think it's pretty simple to listen to this podcast year round. I mean, that's very, a, it's very not simple. simple, Jason. It's, it's, in, it's enjoyable. It's entertaining. It feels uh, your, we're going to take you to the next level, but uh, look, they're already listening. So uh, first, congratulations. Um, I would say that there are, Two different things depending on who you are. Those two quick tips. If you are someone that um, is newer and uh, you're just getting started, ironically, my tip would be to do mock drafts. Mock drafts mm. help you be prepared for your draft. And you don't win the championship at the draft, but you build a foundation for it. And if you mock a couple times before your live draft, I find that I'm always better prepared and less tilty. Because I'm prepped for what happens when I lose player X that I wanted in round Y. You know, it's like I, I'm I'm not when I Very lose that algebraic. player. Oh yeah, man, I'm all about that <laughs> math life. Um, you know, I, I'm I'm just not worried when th- things that I don't want to have happen happen. Um, but if you're the player that you're good, but you need to take it to the next level, you just don't get over the championship hump. You're a playoff contender year in, year out, but middling. I know that was my problem. My biggest recommendation to you is off season. So it's, 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 it's hard to implement now, but when, or if your team fails towards the end of the season, don't stop, you know, taking in a little bit of news. Uh, don't stop watching the games and ignoring everything because what happens is so many of these players break out at the end of every season and coming into the next year, you you just aren't up on it enough and your foundation isn't strong for that following season. Yeah, I mean, in my tip, it's really just echoing what Jason had said. It's, it's paying attention. It's not being on autopilot. 
all of a sudden it's it's Tuesday night and you go, oh crap, I gotta I gotta put my waivers in. Who am I looking at? Like, pay attention to that stuff. You know, Roto World is incredible. Like, they're an incredible news platform. Have them on your uh, muscle memory of of a site you just visit every day and you and you were staying plugged in not checking out during the week that's that's honestly the biggest thing you can do and it's very simple just staying plugged in you got any other tips i think that's i could uh, we should have a whole show on tips (laughs) oh we will so stay tuned we'll have a whole we uh, we tend to do those types uh, of things uh, tips and tricks show but yes plenty of them do not forget the ultimate draft kit our our baby it is available, it is alive, and you can enjoy it all off-season where it will be updated uh, as news breaks and things change. It is available right now, ultimatedraftkit.com. A dollar from every UDK goes to St. Jude Children's Hospital. Uh, fantastic organization that we, we love to be able to support. Let's get into the news. News and notes from around the league. All right, and we're a little. It's a little bit light on the news, uh, you know, just a couple fluff pieces. But I think the biggest piece of news: AJ Green signed his franchise tag. He's going to report on time. I mean, there weren't there weren't really doubts, but it was still a possibility. But AJ Green, he's signed. He says he's going to report to training camp on time. He also has said, Jason. He wants to play four more years. Sure, yeah, no, I I would too. If I was AJ Green and I love football, I'd want to I'd want to play fourteen more years. Uh, but it's not always up to the player who wants to continue their career. Sometimes it just doesn't work out. Hopefully, it does. I've always been an AJ Green fan. Um, in general, not necessarily for fantasy the last year and a half, but uh, I'm doubting he has four more years. Yeah, it's that's it's a tough call if he will or not. AJ Green is he's a wild player this year, man. The range of outcomes of if AJ Green is back and healthy and Burrow is the quarterback that they hope they took at the number one overall pick, it's, I, it, we will all be kicking ourselves for his ADP. Speaking of a player who's a bit lower in ADP, who may have maybe rising in Jason's rankings. Yes. Oh man, we were. <laughs> so we got Owl Borland is running the soundboard. So everyone who just tried to dodge a train, <laughs> send all tweets to at producer Borland. Uh, but anyways, the player I'm talking about, Ronald Jones, the hype train piece came through that he has added six to eight pounds of muscle. Apparently, he weighs two twenty five now. Allegedly, uh, we have we had we had the pleasure of meeting Ronald Jones. I'm not sure how that's fitting on his frame. Like he's, he's not a, he's just not built as a big dude, but anyway, so he's added muscle. He's ready for the workload, but Jason, the, uh, the reason I want to talk about Ronald Jones is because you are having a bit of a change of heart. I, I am genuinely having a bit of a change of heart. Um, you know, like, like we said at the top of the show, we want to stay water when we like a guy or we dislike a guy, uh, early career, Devonta Freeman, you know, wasn't necessarily right. someone we were high on. Obviously, we changed when, um, you know, when when he changed and no longer sucked. And when Ronald I look Jones at Ronald, is changing right now, Ronald He's Jones is changing. Larger. And and this report saying put on six to eight pounds of muscle, um, you know, it's it's not always you know that. Do you want your running backs to add weight to lose weight? Your wide receivers to add weight to lose weight? I I think it's. That was not important to me. Uh, I do like the fact that he's not, you know, this 205-pound back that came in out of college trying to be a workhorse. But the actual report, if you read the entirety of it, showing his training, he has he has basically moved to Arizona to live with his trainer. He's training all day, every day. He's taking, you know, the uphill sprints, 100-yard uphill sprints, multiple reps. He is, I mean, look... The, when when I look at the life of the world right now in COVID season, I often think to myself, "To my, I've got multiple selves." Um, <laughs> oh, I think to man. all, I think to all of me, <laughs> it's all quite of the admission, yeah, um, <laughs> that this is going to kind of show who's lazy and who you know the teams are teams sure. are large. Uh, you know, a ton of players in the NFL. Not everyone is the hardest working guy out there. 
Um, but those who are willing to put in the work on their own when the the they can't be at the camp, they can't be with the team, um, are going to thrive. And looking at the amount of work he's been doing this offseason, catching the jugs balls. machine, Jason. Yep, we got jugs machine hype. I, I know, but he needs it. He needs to catch three hundred balls a day because that was that was one of my issues with him, and that's why I was excited about Keyshawn Vaughn coming in. Is because Tom Brady's going to throw the ball to the running back. I know that for sure. So who is the pass catching running back? It has not been Ronald Jones so far in his career, but that's not to say he can't improve on that. He's been working hard. And I, you know, I mentioned this a couple weeks ago, I went back, I watched about half of Ronald Jones season. I was a little bit more impressed than, uh, you know, my, my initial opinion on him. So I, I am rising a little bit. I changed his stats. I gave him a little bit more of the, uh, workload, over Keyshawn Vaughn, um, who I had ranked higher than Ronald Jones, and those flipped recently for me. So if you if you've been logging into the Ultimate Draft Kit and you saw a change, uh, is based upon this report and just looking deeper into it. Ronald Jones is definitely uh, a higher priority target for teams that start off uh, wide receiver and tight end heavy because of what Ronald Jones could be in, in a system that is led by Tom Brady. Like he could. He could easily end up being a top twenty running back. Uh, it's it's nice to have Jason on board with that. Theory. It hurts my brand, man. It, you know because <laughs> when Ronald Jones was coming out as a rookie, and I had that eye procedure and the infamous sunglasses episode where I could yes. say what I really believe, and I just flat out called him a bust. That was really good for my brand because he sucked his whole rookie year. Um, and but I I can't just stay to that because I was right once. I, I think that Ronald Jones will have fantasy value this year. I think that that really kind of wraps up the news. There's not really a ton of other solid stuff to talk about. I mean, the NFL PA and the NFL are still trying to figure uh, some stuff out. Hopefully they do, and we can get the players into training camp as safe as humanly possible. Before we get into the mock draft, I want to thank today's sponsor. Look, are you trying to take – your own personal game to the next level. Talk about education. Look, you're not going to stop working until you reach your goals. Neither will w WGU. It's why they've created an online university for people whose ambition never rests. WGU's innovative competency-based learning model was designed specifically to fit in the lives of busy adults. WGU is nonprofit offering online bachelor's and master's degrees in business IT, education, and nursing. You can move through the material you already know and spend time learning what you don't, which means the faster you demonstrate what you know, the faster you finish. It's also about half the cost of, of most other online universities, so you can graduate with far less debt or none at all. Get your $65 education fee waived at wgu.edu slash fantasy footballers. That's wgu.edu slash fantasy footballers. And we want to thank Simply Safe for... Being an awesome company. Here's the thing about home security companies. Most of them trap you with the high prices, the tricky contracts, awful customer support. There's a lot of options out there, but there's only one no-brainer. It's Simply Safe. We've used it to protect our studio long yep. before they were a sponsor because they're just a home run. They're affordable. They're good at what they do. They have professional monitoring that keeps watch day and night. They send police or fire or medical. Uh, their arsenal of sensors and cameras can blanket every single room, whether it's, you know, your home, your office, whatever it is, there's no drawbacks of traditional home security. You can set it up yourself in an hour's peel and stick for the sensors, no technician required. There's no contract, no pushy sales guy, no hidden fees, no fine print. And it and it starts at fifteen dollars a month. Uh, and we're not the only ones that think Simply Safe is great. US News and World Report named it the best overall home security company of 2020 for a lot of reasons. So try Simply Safe today at simplysafe.com slash footballers and you'll get free shipping and a 60 day risk free trial. There is nothing to lose. That is simplysafe.com slash footballers if you want to protect your home and your family as best as you can. The Fantasy Footballers Mock Draft. Oh. Mock draft time. We did like kick said, Jay Grizz out because we knew he was just going to go all bears. Yeah, he he has his own built-in strategy. It's not recommended <laughs> to go all Chicago Bears. But as I said at the top of the show, 
This is a different mock draft. We are picking a strategy, and we are going with it. Jason, again, will be RB heavy. I am going with a, a more of a zero RB approach. Jason is at the three spot. I am at the four spot. Uh, so far, we got Christian McCaffrey, Saquon Barkley off the board uh, per usual, as you would think. So, Jay, you're on the board. Who are you going with? Well, I'm, I, I think it's pretty obvious to anybody out there. It's going to be Zeke. Um, you know, the top three picks are almost always those three guys. It goes Christian McCaffrey, Saquon, and then Zeke, usually in that order. Um, you have the added hopeful safety of, uh, you know, Zeke already having gone through COVID. So maybe that'll be good going forward. Maybe, man. I don't Not a I doctor. Mean, there, no yes, idea. Not, not a doctor. No science. But every advantage possible. You got to look deep, right? You got to look. I guess. Who's, who's the coaches? <laughs> I, mean, I don't, I don't what's, know, man. <laughs> what's, what is his antibody level? You know what I mean? Like, you got to dive deep on this stuff. But it's, it's a no-brainer. And I love that we're back-to-back. -back. Because we're trying these two different strategies, um, it's not like one of us is near the top of the draft, one of us is near the back of the draft, right. and you're comparing apples to oranges. These are teams that you'll get right around the same spot of the draft. And when you're mock drafting, you know we would not hold to a rigid standard like this in a real draft, but when you're mock drafting, try some of these strategies that you might not think to do live and see if you like your team better. So I'm on the clock. Uh, I get the choice of my number one wide receiver. I'm going to go with Michael Thomas. Uh, he he just he feels like the the safest possible wide receiver, the one whose range of outcomes, like if if he busts, so to speak, he's still going to be a, a wide receiver one. His, you know, historically, we don't see people repeat at the number one position very often, but he's just, he's so safe with Drew Brees back. After that, we had... Another Saint, Alvin Kamara, Devontae Adams, Nick Chubb, Dalvin Cook. Okay, Dalvin Cook went at the 108. Jason is, is laughing a little <laughs> this, bit here. This draft sucks. Keep going. <laughs> okay. Uh, and then, so Dalvin went at the 108. Derrick Henry with his new big bag of money. He went at the 109. Joe Mixon. So we had a pretty heavy RB run there. Tyreek Hill. Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, look, he snuck into the first round on this draft. Then, second round started, DeAndre Hopkins, Josh Jacobs, Lamar Jackson, Aaron Jones, Julio Jones. So, really no surprises so far, I guess, except that Patrick Mahomes jumped up into the first round. Miles Sanders, Travis Kelsey, Kenyon Drake. I'm a little bit bummed here that Travis Kelsey went. He was going to be my target for round two. Uh, with this approach, I want a positional advantage. Travis Kelsey provides one. George Kittle, I believe, also provides that same uh, positional advantage for tight ends. And honestly, George Kittle could finish as the number one tight end. Sounds like you should take George Kittle. Well, I, I, I want to walk through the wide receivers okay, first. All right. So Chris Godwin, Kenny Galladay, Allen Robinson, Mike Evans. These are the type of wide receivers who are still there. I like Chris Godwin a lot. He is, I still have him, you know, in that that second tier of wide receivers. I know there is definitely some risk with Tom Brady coming in with change overall. So I I'm between Chris Godwin and George Kittle right now. I I'm going to go with Kittle though cuz there's still a lot of wide receivers who are, you know, excellent players but the positional advantage of tight end I can't pass up on Kittle here in the second. And this is why you want to stay water, my friends, because if this was my team, uh, here's here's the targets that I'd be looking for to start running back heavy from the three spot, right? I got Zeke. I'm super stoked about that. If I could get Kenyon Drake or Miles Sanders, uh, guys who just went you know, two picks ahead, um, I would be thrilled. As the board lays out right now, I would, without a shred of doubt, take Chris Godwin in my normal draft. He's my number seven wide receiver overall. I'm not as high on, say, Austin Eckler and Clyde Edwards-Alaire as um, a lot of other people are, and those would be kind of the highest running backs on the board. Um, 
so when I look at this draft and I know because I'm sticking to this running back heavy approach, I want to see what kind of a team I can build out to why we're doing this practice. We talked a lot, uh, I believe on our previous episode through the Kansas City Chiefs about if you're going to go after a Clyde Edwards Alaire, which you have to take in the second round, it's too high for my normal price. I would only do that if I'm going the triple running back approach where the next round I might okay. get someone like a Todd Gurley or you know a David Johnson, someone that I think can help out while we wait for Edwards Alaire to get the lion's share of the draft. So I'm going to draft for the first time this year, Clyde Edwards Alaire. Yeah, and you're right by the turn, so not very many players went uh, between your, your two picks. So you took Alaire. Godwin, Beckham, Kenny Galladay. So that was a pretty good run for you. Yes. And then Austin Eckler. So only one other running back went off the board. If you were able to start a draft with Zeke, Edwards Alaire, Austin Eckler, that would have been pretty sensational for me and my rankings and my belief in those two players. But who are you looking at now with this running back three? This is the uh, age-old question that is only this year old. Uh, which is the <laughs> elder statesman, right? This is the time when you're at the Todd Gurley, uh, Melvin Gordon, David Johnson, Lev Bell, uh, you know, the, yeah. the, the, the beginning of the third round. All those guys are available, and I, I have shifted on to which player I like better and worse. Uh, ADP wise, the 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 lowest ranked of those of that group is David Johnson, but he's actually my highest ranked running back of that group because I'm near a turn and um, I, I'm at the end of the turn. So it's going to be a lot of time before um, anybody comes back to me. I have to take the player that I have ranked the highest um, and not play the ADP game. So I'm going to take David Johnson. I think that if, uh, you know, if Carlos Hyde can rush for, you know, 1,060 yards, uh, David Johnson could do it as well. And he's going to get targets with the loss of Hopkins I, I still believe, and I think I mentioned, I went back and watched uh, two games of David Johnson just to see if he really lost it, and he mm -hmm. actually looked pretty decent. I just think he was a terrible scheme fit for Cliff Kingsbury's offense. And I don't think I mentioned this yet, but the, the format we are playing in, one quarterback, two running back, two wide receivers, one tight end, and one flex. Five bench spots currently with this setup. So the, that's the team that we are building. I'm on the clock. I'm taking another wide receiver here because I've, I've addressed the tight end situation. Allen Robinson, Mike Evans, Juju, Amari Cooper. These are guys who are on the board, but I've, I've got to stick here with my draft board, and it's a player that I love, and I'm, uh, I feel like I'm reaching here at least a little bit according to ADP, but it doesn't matter because I'm taking the sensation that is, he's sweeping the nation from Carolina. He's on the ones and the twos. I'm taking DJ Moore. Yeah, I, I, love, I love DJ Moore. I love his upside. I love that he has an accurate quarterback now in Teddy Bridgewater. He's got Matt Ja Rule coming in, bringing uh, hopefully, another, hopefully taking out NFL defenses with a uh, with an up-tempo college scheme. Again, that that's all just projection and everything, but... If, if DJ Moore can get it done last year with uh, trash at the quarterback position, I think that the, the sky is the limit for DJ Moore. Yeah, you and I are both big DJ Moore fans. He, he probably wasn't my favorite wide receiver on the board, uh, but obviously you and I d disagree on Amari Cooper's outlook. But DJ Moore fits what the Panthers' personnel strengths and weaknesses are. They have a bad offensive line, they have a bad defense, and they have a quarterback who doesn't throw deep as much. So your Robbie Anderson, Curtis Samuels, we'll see how they, uh, you know, will will fare this year. But DJ Moore is going to have so many on target quick get the ball in his hands opportunities yep. to break a long play. They're going to need to throw the ball. They're going to need to get it out of his hands quickly. DJ Moore will be great this year. I I completely agree. So I took DJ Moore. The players that a lot of players went flying off the board cuz we are uh, near the beginning of the round, you know, Evans, Cooper, Leonard Fournette. Uh, I don't see anyone on this list except for me. Okay. 
at the 4-8, so just before my pick, Cortland Sutton went off the board. We did focus on the Denver Broncos in our past episode. Does Cortland Sutton here go going at this point of the draft, Jason? What how what are your thoughts on him there? Yeah, I mean there's there's still players I would I would prefer over Sutton. Um he he's been dropping more and more to where he's getting closer to acceptable, but last year he had the lion's share of the 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 market share. Now they bring in Jerry Judy, uh, KJ Hamler, uh, a more capable receiving back in Melvin Gordon. So, um, you know, I I think this is about where he should go, but there are other wide receivers I prefer ahead of him. The Rams pair went at four three and four four. Cooper Cup, Robert Woods. I would have. Uh, done a celebratory dance had Robert Woods dropped down to me. Oh, I love him as a wide receiver too. So that would have been that, so so angry because he's the one I wanted to drop down to me as well. The, being that he's my first wide receiver, and I would have been so now I don't have to be angry with you. That's great. Yeah, it, like putting him at your wide receiver three, and uh, he, he would be my flex while I have George Kittle. That would have been a pretty wild start for me. But there's a guy on the board. Uh, who I can't stop talking about this offseason, who, look, it's it's Chark Week, man. DJ Chark. I got DJ and DJ on my team yet again. Uh, but look, this is just how drafts are starting these days. I have DJ Chark as a wide receiver one. I'm not really sure why people aren't believing what he did last year with Gardner Minshew, who is still the quarterback uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars. So DJ Chark, he is... He's about as close to an a lock, uh, fourth round, fourth fifth round lock for my team as you can get. Jay's on the clock. I am on the clock. I would have taken DJ Chark as well. So this is uh, now. Now that I've started running back, running back, running back, forced that issue. I now feel forced into wide receiver. Uh, this is why we say stay water because the draft board the way it fell in the second round, I would not have gone running back. Now that I have to go wide receiver, and and when you're running back heavy, the nice thing is is you're going to I'm not going to really look at running back for several more rounds. I'll grab a couple, uh, you know, backups later in the draft, or if there's a good value on somebody. But I'm going to load up from here on out on wide receivers, and I'll probably still take a late tight end because none of the top guys, you know, a, a Zach Ertz didn't fall to me here. So when I look at the wide receivers on the board, I'm between a couple of people. And it's pretty much between Calvin Ridley and Tyler Lockett. They're both very high in my rankings. I have Calvin Ridley a little bit ahead, but I do have that question of because this is my first wide receiver, do I want to take the risk on Calvin Ridley really taking that next step forward and jumping to what I hope and project him to do or what I feel is a more secure pick in Tyler Lockett being the number one with a, mm. uh, you know, a great quarterback and I'm actually going to lean that way and go with Tyler Lockett here um, with a very specific hope of a wide receiver that comes back to me after a quick turn. So you took Tyler Lockett, who I, I like it. I really think that we are undervaluing Tyler Lockett. The, uh, the emergence of DK Metcalf has caused some doubt on Tyler Lockett's ability for, for some reason. I think that's... <laughs> Uh, not the way we should be uh, looking at the Seattle Seahawks wide receivers. So Tyler Lockett, the enigmatic Keenan Allen went at 411, Calvin Ridley, James Conner, Devontae Parker. Uh, Jason is back on the clock. Did, did the player that you wanted make it back? The player that I wanted did make it back. I chose to go with what I thought was a little bit safer in Tyler Lockett over the upside of Calvin Ridley, partly because I thought that the higher upside, not not, not necessarily the, the highest probability, but the higher upside was actually with Terry McLaurin, who might oh, be able to make you it dirty back dog. to me. That so was I, my pick. Oh, I love it. I know we, we're both big fans, and, and no one's a bigger fan than you are of Terry McLaurin, so I'm, I'm happy to take him right in front of your face. Mm, um, it feels bad. Yeah, I mean, I it feels it feels so good. That's the nice thing about fantasy is when 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 someone feels bad, you get to feel good about it. Oh man! All right, uh, and he would have been on my bench, but like passing on what Terry McLaurin could be, I it's not something I would do. All right, so right now I have Michael Thomas, DJ Moore, George Kittle, DJ Chark. They are in my starting roster. If I take a wide receiver here, they will go to the bench. 
Of course, I don't have any running backs or a quarterback. So perhaps I need to take a little gander at the quarterbacks who are available. We got Dak Prescott. So Mahomes and Lamar Jackson are both gone. Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson. You know, these are guys who are have that top ability, top five, top three. Uh, Jay, do you still... Th- do you still believe Russell Wilson has top three upside as a yeah, fantasy I, quarterback? I definitely believe he has top three upside. Uh, I, I, I don't have him there. He's my quarterback six, but there are a, there's a very easy path towards that, right? You lose your Davion Clowney, presumably. He has not signed anywhere yet, but right. assuming you lose him and your defense takes a step back and you've lost Rashad Penny and Chris Carson's injury is kind of nebulous and up in the air, and it's a year two for DK Metcalf, and you had for the first time ever, you had Russell Wilson this offseason being a squeaky wheel, basically flat out saying he wished they ran an offense like they did in Kansas City, where he got to just air it out. And I don't think that, you know, Pete Carroll's going to change, but at least he is verbalizing that's what he wants. So I think that's without a doubt in his range of outcome. He is one of the three best real life quarterbacks in the league. So I'm still a little upset that you took Terry McLaurin Good. away from me. Deal with it. <laughs> I would have been really, really happy. So uh, lo- DK Metcalf is my highest ranked wide receiver in my wide receiver tiers. Looking at them, <sighs> I like Dak. I like Russell. I like Kyler, and I like Watson. I'm I am really struggling over here. Which, uh, if I was going to go with a quarterback at the running back position. Jonathan Taylor, Mark Ingram, David Montgomery. Now it's interesting. Okay. Like I'm not, I would not consider myself an expert on zero RB, the, the, the optimal way to play out this strategy. I understand it. Cause it's all the reason it was built, or I should say, uh, discussed and Sean Siegel coined the term zero running back because it's all about running backs get hurt and, These running backs that you take later on the draft, they actually gain value as the season goes along. That's kind of the the basis of the of the strategy, which it 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 makes sense to me. But I could get David Montgomery here. His volume is so secure. Mark Ingram seems like he would be a. a, I I like Mark Ingram more, but David Montgomery is definitely locked into his touches far more than Mark Ingram. But at the end of the day, it's, it's it's too sexy, Jason. It's too sexy. Kyler Murray's on my team. Oh, <laughs> you you went a whole <laughs> lot of places here at this pick. I took Terry McLaurin away from you, and you did a pirouette, and you looked at all the options as you spun around, and finally, uh, the you know the 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 bottle stopped on. Sometimes the Kyler. heart. Just wants what the heart wants. And, and you, Kyler Murray is on my team. And you took him over Dak. Now, where do you have Dak and I, Kyler Murray ranked? I have Kyler as my number three quarterback. So I, I was still following my your uh, board. I was yeah, still I, following my board. I have Dak as my number three. So I when when you said that Dak was still out there in this round for a zero RB team, I thought uh, that that would be the way that you might go. But of course. Yeah, if you've got Kyler higher, you're basically going the same uh, strategic route, but with a different person. All right. So after I took Kyler, T.Y. Hilton, Jonathan Taylor, D.K. Metcalf, Cam Akers, Kareem Hunt, Darren Waller, another tight end, finally went off the board here. Stephon Diggs, he didn't make it back to you, Jason. I'm I'm so sorry. DeAndre Swift. It's all oh. right. I have a different target in mind. All right. Well, I hope it wasn't Marquise Brown because he was the first pick of the sixth round. (laughs) Dak, AJ Green, who I actually really would have liked to draft with my next pick. We just talked about his upside. Tyler Higbee, David Montgomery almost made it back to me. Deshaun Watson, Jules Edelman, Russell Wilson. So I am back on the board. The wide receivers, like the high upside wide receivers, in my opinion, they have really thinned out. Uh, you know, Jarvis, Tyler Boyd, Michael Gallup, who is interesting. Marvin Jones, weekly upside, weekly downside. That is Marvin Jones. Uh, Brandon Cooks, Will Fuller. Th- those are the type of wide receivers who are there. And I have most of my starting lineup filled. Kyler, Michael Thomas, DJ Moore, George Kittle, DJ Chark. 
But Mark Ingram made it back. Now, like I said, I've, I'm not an expert on if you're going zero RB, when you want to go in on one. But in the sixth round with this team I have assembled, it's really impossible for my brain to bypass Mark Ingram at this point. So I'm going to take him. He is yeah. my RB1. Yeah, I mean, I you know, zero RB, maybe you're like oh, it's sticking to, ah, you got to be at least, you know, right. round eight. But if Mark Ingram is there and you're, you, you just got to take value at, at some point. I think that's the right pick for your team. But I was also worried that you might take the one guy that I really wanted oh, to come back to me who was there, is available. And we haven't talked about this player in detail in probably uh, you know, a, a month or two. I, we talked about him a lot after the draft because he was one of those guys that as soon as the draft happened, everybody said, oh, this guy's done. And then you look more deep into it and you say, I don't think that's true at all. A thousand-yard receiver in his second year right. in only 14 games. Michael Gallup, I think, is still has the ability to have an unbelievable season ahead of him. Um, so he he's the guy that I wanted to come back to me. I feel like that's, when I that's look, why I would have taken if I had gone wide receiver. Fantastic that you didn't. I mean, I look at my team now, and I've got Ezekiel Elliott, Clyde edwards alaire and David you, Johnson you at running have, back. You didn't didn't on our last mock draft, didn't you end up with double Cowboys? Uh, I I did, think you had and, Cooper and Gallup. <laughs> yes, I had Cooper and Gallup last time. Thankfully, so now I, you have the RB wide receiver two stack. I'm fine with that. I I, I would much rather have a, a running back and wide receiver from the same team than two wide receivers from the same team. It either way, you limit your upside. But in one approach, you actually strengthen your consistency because if it's a running game or a passing game, I'm going to get points. So I I don't have any problem with Zeke and Gallup on the same team whatsoever. Um, the, the Amari Cooper Gallup combo was, that was, that was, a, that was a bit of a problem. <laughs> that was an oversight. That was, that was an oversight. Um, right. Hunter Henry, Drew Brees, Devin Singletary, Matt Ryan. So two quarterbacks went off, which I imagine is great for you. Cause I don't think you were looking at the quarterback position. Where are you looking now that you got Michael Gallup? So now that I've got three stud running backs, hopefully, and I believe I've got a, a, a really nice group of wide receivers here able to pull it out with Tyler Lockett, Terry McLaurin, Michael Gallup. They're solid enough that hopefully my running backs, once Clyde Edwards-Alaire comes into his own, and you know if he's a top 10 running back and Zeke is a top three running back and DJ is a top 15, I should be good here. So I think I've got flexibility at this pick. So this is where I'm going to look at all the positions. Uh, right away at quarterback, I'm going to see that there's way, way, way too many guys I love to take one here. Whether I take Josh Allen or Wentz or Brady or Stafford or – uh, you know, Cam Newton, there, there's just too many that I'm happy to have later in the draft to say I've got to take one now. So I'm going to compare my best options at running back with my best options at wide receiver. Um, and, you know, at running back, you've got a lot of, um, let's say, hopeful things break the right way, guys. Sure. You got Raheem Mostert. Is he on the 49ers? I, you know, I, I don't think they're going to trade him, but he requested a trade. Uh, is Darius guys going to stay healthy? Uh, I talked earlier about, you know, Keyshawn Vaughn is probably now, I think, secondary to Ronald Jones, who Ronald Jones is available. Um, but none of those guys inspire me. None of them make me excited about their prospects. And because I went running back heavy early I think it's better to add more depth my three wide receivers are not as good as my three running backs and I've got a guy who's back right next to Michael Gallup in my rankings it's up and down back and forth but Marvin Jones to me is a great value this year his numbers weren't that crazy far off from Kenny Galladay on a per game basis and their draft position is crazy far off so I'm going to take Marvin Jones and hope that I could get some upside from my wide receivers here on a week in week out basis play the right matchups all right for my team I am actually very surprised that Raheem Mostert is still available uh I I get that the the range of outcomes for for Mostert is a bit all over the place with what's happening uh you know Tevin Coleman is still there to uh, requested the trade but Raheem Mostert earlier in the offseason was going, you know, fifth round, fourth round, and here we are in the seventh, and I can get him as my running back too. I think that that value is just too good to pass up 
for who is potentially the starting running back in a Kyle Shanahan system. The other running backs, you know, guys, James White, Jordan Howard, Sony Michelle, they don't have this uh, to me. They don't have the ceiling that Raheem Mostert could give my team, and so I'm I'm going to t- I'm going to take him. This is what's happening. Yeah, don't blame me. All right, Mostert is on my team, so now my starting squad is filled in. Which again, by the way, you don't always draft your starting lineup first. Like it, it's okay to draft bench players if they are way higher up on your tier or on your rankings, on your draft board, what have you. Like, don't I almost draft to always, fill your starting I, roster. I, I, I cannot remember the last time that the beginning, you know, however many starters you have on your roster, you got seven or eight starters. I don't remember the last time I filled my starting lineup before filling bench spots because, you know, whether it's quarterback or tight end or both, I'm going to, I'm going to work on adding depth to my team usually before I add those positions. After I took Mostert, there was quite the run of wide receivers and quarterbacks. Only two running backs went in that time. So I don't know. That's very interesting. You know, highlights of like Darius Slayton went, Debo went. So Debo Samuel in the, okay, 710, Jason. Debo Samuel, we aren't exactly sure when he will be ready. He could be ready week one. Maybe he's ready week three, week four. At 7'10", a player we were all very, very excited for, would you draft Debo there to sit on your bench for a little bit? Yeah, I mean, this this is where um, you're exactly right. Is he sitting on your bench? If so, then yes. If not, it, depending on how your draft went, for this specific team, Team 10, uh, it looks like they had a tight end. They had Lamar Jackson. So this is a, a necessary starter for their team. I probably wouldn't have taken him there, but if I had the room with my wide receiver core to put him on the bench he's good you know you're talking about okay would you rather have Debo's upside or Tyler Boyd who's eh, he's okay he's a he's a quality NFL receiver but with a rookie quarterback and AJ Green there or Darius Slayton eh, you hope he takes a step forward these are the guys he's going around so I would take Debo in general uh, but I would want him on my bench or the ability to put him on my bench to start the season all right let's take a look at the running back situation I don't need a quarterback I don't need a tight end those positions don't matter to me anymore so Dobbins is there the rookie JK Dobbins in case I want another player with uh first off two initials for the the first name to join my team also he would be my backup for Mark Ingram man the the running back list is not very inspiring at this point uh Tevin Coleman uh, so again I could double up on San Francisco carry on Marlon Mack who we discussed recently perhaps he has more value than people believe Alexander Madison what's going on with Dalvin Cook that's a really interesting situation Jay have you I know not really news has not transpired on the Dalvin Cook front but are you still confident in Dalvin Cook where are you feeling about him and the Alexander Madison like when people should be taking him if you're drafting right now I don't I don't know that I'm very confident on Dalvin Cook um I I do expect that he'll get a a deal done and he'll be the starter but I would draft Alexander Madison regardless like if if he has the job and he signs he's a huge injury risk in Dalvin and so whenever I take Dalvin Cook I'm in the eighth round I'm always taking Alexander Madison. So far, I have not missed him in any draft that I have taken Dalvin Cook. And I would do the same. If Dalvin Cook signed tomorrow his contract, I would be looking. I would probably grab him more in the ninth round because he would drop lower. But I would still be grabbing Alexander Madison and every single time I grab Dalvin Cook. Interesting. Okay. And a uh, zero RB running back, Alexander Madison's exactly what you're looking for. A late round yes. guy who could be a, a star due to injury or, in this case, possible holdout. Sure, and I'm going to take the player who should be a starter regardless, but the hype of uh, Keyshawn Vaughn has pushed him down the draft boards, but I'm going to take Ronald Jones. Oh, man! 
It done me dirty. <laughs> I was going to take Ronald Jones for the first time in my adult oh, life. Oh, no. I prevented that moment. You prevented. Oh. Thank you, in I a way. I apologize to the my, world. My brand thanks you for stopping me from taking Ronald Jones the <laughs> second because he was going to be my pick, which I guess means kudos to you on uh, on taking him there. Um, and, for, so, and by the way, like as is happening a lot, Keyshawn Vaughn was drafted before Ronald Jones. Every draft I've seen, I've I have not seen uh, any any draft, especially any kind of live draft with um, you know all humans and no AI, where Ronald Jones goes ahead of Keyshawn, of Keyshawn Vaughn. All right, Jay, you are up. Ronald Jones will not be on your team. Which Ronald direction Jones are you looking? Will not be on my team. Uh, this is where I start looking at tight ends, see if there's one or two that I really have above the rest. I know that if my team were handed to Mike, you would smash Evan Ingram here. Yes, I would. Um, he's you know, a tier above the others. I don't have that same belief in him. And name-wise, I'm sure I would do well in the polls to draft Evan Ingram here. Um, Maybe. I don't know. I, I feel like the public has soured on Ingram. I have Jared Cook significantly higher than Evan Ingram in my personal rankings, and I don't think I need to take Jared Cook here. I would be fine leaving the draft with a Mike Gesicki, uh, you know, or, or someone in that, that tier as well. So I'm, I'm not looking at tight end as far as quarterback goes. Um, there's a handful of guys I like. I'm, I'm at the short turn, so I'll see if quarterbacks go on a run before my next pick. So I'm still staring down running backs and wide receivers. My team, I have Zeke, Clyde Edwards-Alaire, and David Johnson. At running back and at wide receiver, I've got Lockett, McLaurin, Gallup, and Marvin Jones. So I think I could go either direction. Um, I really wanted Ronald Ronald Jones. Um, <laughs> Cut that and, audio. Yeah. It's, oh, that, gosh. Please don't do it. Don't. Get it out. Show the world. Uh, um, so when I look at uh, the running backs that are out there, they oh. are mostly um, backup types uh, with, this, with the exception of the two-pack that is always here. Jordan Howard. Sony Michelle, um, Jordan Howard and Sony Michelle are depth pieces to plug in when you're on a bye week or an injury or a, a, a dire necessity. Um, I'm actually going to pull the trigger on Alexander Madison. I think because I have okay. three quality starters and you only need to start two in this format, I would rather take the high upside of saying, well, he could actually break into my lineup if he's the starter uh, valuable handcuff, and he'll go in the next round. So I'm going to uh, add to my running back depth with him. Let me ask you this question, Jay. If we get news soon, like let's say news breaks, Sony Michelle, he's starting on the pup because of uh, his off-season surgery. He's still not ready to go. He's going to miss six weeks. Who moves up your draft board? Who are you then targeting as a potential uh, you know, weak winner for for the first month and a half. You know what's crazy? And we talked about this as we were in our Scotty Fishbowl draft. You know, a lot of love has been given to Damian Harris because of Sony Michelle's injury um, and saying, well, if he starts on the pup, uh, Damian Harris, who was a third round pick, will get his opportunity. And yeah, he'll, he'll probably get his opportunity. But the truth is, he had opportunity to take that role last year and they gave him fewer right. carries than Nikhil Harry. Um, and Rex Burke had started the year, the first three weeks before he got injured as a quality Jeez. back. Are we, are we talking about goat head? Are we bringing it back? I, I hate the nickname, yes. so I'm not bringing that back, but sexy Rex, he is a legitimate <laughs> late round pick. I, I, I believe right. he could start the year and be, um, you know, a, a meaningful player here. All right. So let's see. We got Ronald Jones, Madison. Marlon Mack, Matt Parita, Jordan Howard, and Carrion Johnson. We had a big running back run. Jason, you are back up. Who are you complimenting Alexander Madison with? Uh, not to put names in your head, but Damian Williams is still on the board as well. Uh, you did take Clyde Edwards-Alaire. You would have the Kansas City backfield on lockdown. On top of that, Damian Williams just might be the starter for for Kansas City, but it's your pick. Where are you going? Yeah, so what I don't enjoy doing 
Um, I, I don't mind having, so I took a backup in Alexander Madison, who very well might be the starter if Dalvin Cook holds out. But what I know won't happen is I know there will never be a situation where I've got both these guys on my roster and I'm not sure who to start. And I could get the start wrong. You know what I mean? Like there's no situation where Dalvin Cook is available, but I think it's going to be an Alexander Madison week. Uh, whereas you, you know, with Damian Williams and Clyde Edwards, a lair, I'm going to have to hold both of these guys. I can't cut one of them. I'm not sure until after the changeover has been made to Clyde Edwards, a lair. I don't like that on my roster, but I wouldn't blame someone for going that way and trying to have the backfield. That's not how I'm going to go, especially after just taking Alexander Madison. I'm actually going to take a guy who I have taken everywhere. I got you guys to take him in the Scotty fishbowl. Um, we, we talked about him on the last episode, despite the uh, belief in his quarterback as projecting probably not to greatness. I believe that I, I believe wholeheartedly that Jerry Judy is a uh, great Man. NFL wide receiver. Yeah. You, are, I'm, I'm, you are in. You are in. On I Jerry am Judy. in on Jerry Judy as a late round guy. This is where we've got two bench spots left uh, for my roster. And I, you know, I'm going to take a shot at a guy where, OK, I could cut him early into the season if it looks like. The Broncos stink and Locke isn't who we wanted him to be. And, uh, you know, Judy's got to, you know, get his feel for the NFL. Uh, but I, I think Jerry Judy's one of the most NFL ready receivers I've ever scouted at the college level. His route running is better than most NFL players. His speed is better than most NFL players. And he can break long passes. He's my Odell Beckham comp. So I'm going to take Jerry Judy late, as I've done in almost every draft I've been in. All right. So that puts me on the board. Uh, I do only have three wide receivers. I have three running backs right now, but because I took my wide receivers at the beginning of the draft, I feel very, very confident in who they are in their ability. Wide receivers left, Christian Kirk, Jamison Crowder, Mike Williams, Shepard, also known as the wide receiver two for the New York Giants because Golden Tate is still on the board, the actual wide receiver one for that team. But these are these are floor players. I mean, like I like Crowder, I like Tate. I think that they offer uh, a safety to your team. But like I said, I feel secure in my wide receivers, not as sturdy in my running backs. So I'm going to grab Damian Williams in the chance that he is still the starter for Kansas City and the starter for quite some time. Uh Thoughts thoughts on grabbing Damian Williams? Right uh, there, I, I think he makes perfect sense right. for your team. Um, you're you're getting really high value backups here for the zero RB approach. Where should Clyde edwards alaire either get off to a really slow start because he's a rookie and there's a you know a, a, a truncated off season this year, or should Clyde edwards alaire get injured? I mean, at that point, Damian Williams is not just a decent fantasy right. option he's a super high value fantasy option makes perfect sense for your roster so sony michelle tevin coleman james white they went on the board off the board after i took damian williams then we had a little wide receiver run christian kirk jalen rager the rookie from philadelphia sterling shepherd people keep drafting sterling shepherd ahead of golden tate that's fine uh mccall I, I would do it as well <laughs> stop you people are wrong golden tate is the man I don't know why I've had to dig in and be so so boisterous about my thoughts about Golden Tate. It's a ridiculous world we live in. Uh, and if you know what, because I'm, I'm back on the clock, we had some tight ends go off the board as well. Evan Ingram, Jared Cook, Hayden there Hurst, were, they're gone. There were three tight ends that I was looking at, and I'd be happy with any one of them coming back to me. They were Evan Ingram, Jared Cook, and Hayden Hurst. Any one of them I would be happy with. So and I was gone. Gonna, and all three are you gone. You danced with the devil too long. That's right. And sometimes that's the price you pay. And that's where, you know, we've done enough mock drafts to know where I'm going to go if it if it falls that way. And I, you know, end up having to punt the tight end position further than the tiers I want. I mentioned earlier, I'm happy with Gasicki. I have him ranked pretty darn high. Um, and I, I also would be fine in a, when you're drafting late, when you're drafting late at tight end. I don't expect that the tight end I draft to be my starting tight end for the year. Like, that's not what I'm drafting. I'm drafting a guy who can get off to a hot start, right, you're hopefully ro yeah. grow into that role, but I'm also completely fine cutting him and moving on. And so even though I don't have Gronk high in my rankings, he's the perfect type of player where it's like, wow, if you take a Gronk 
and he ends up having the main tight end role for Tom Brady on this Tampa Bay offense, then home run, what a you know great pick. And if not, whatever, I'm going to move on from him and I'll sign uh, Gasicki or Fant or Jonu Smith off the waivers. And, so you're going to draft Gronk over Jonu? I am not drafting uh, either at this pick, but I'm just oh, saying okay. <laughs> how my tight end is faring. Um, uh, when I look catch at the the Madden hullabaloo, they they released their the ratings for the tight end position, and Gronk was given a 95. Oh my goodness, are you serious? Yes, I am serious. The dude who took a year off of football wasn't superstar Gronk. The last time we saw him, they gave him a freaking 95. It is outrageous. Wow. That's, People are mad online about it. That's for sure. I'm, yeah. Look, I'm a little bit upset about you're, it. You're <laughs> you're clearly heated. Um, <laughs> all right. So when I when I look at my roster, I'm fine with uh, Gronk, Kasicki, Austin Hooper's still out there, but I don't I don't really like uh, his prospects quite as much. So um, I'm gonna take a a you know I've I've got one bench spot. I could go quarterback here, um, and I think I'm going to do that because Carson Wentz to me. Year in, year out, he's reliable, and if the right pieces hit, like Jalen Rager, um, Dallas Goddard steps up, I, he, he has the ability to be a top-end fantasy option. All right, so you took Carson Wentz, Robbie Anderson, Gronk, Jamison Crowder, and Daryl Henderson. They all went. Jason, you're back on the clock. I don't think you lost out on any players that you wanted to draft. No, and, and it, you know when I looked at the tight end, I was basically between Gasicki and Gronk. And I figured I, because it's a short turn, I'd be fine to pick one of them. Gronk went. I will take mm. Mike Gasicki, as I said earlier in uh, the show. He, I'm, I'm fine with walking away with him. I did not think coming into the year that I would be high on Gasicki. He's actually my tight end eight. Um, I like him a lot. And you know, like I just said, I want a guy who starts strong. And I think you're going to start the season with Ryan Fitzpatrick. Ryan Fitzpatrick was utilizing Gasicki phenomenally towards the end of the year. So uh, I'm going to take the upside on on a true freak athlete. He's a Saquon level freak athlete. Yeah, he's he's pretty amazing. So I am on the clock. Uh, we we are into the doldrums. We are in the where the draft picks are much tougher. The running backs available. You know, Philip Lindsay, Tariq Cohen, Latavius Murray, Duke Johnson. Uh, you know, and then we're into backups as well. Tony Pollard. Chase Edmonds. So the way I'm looking at it, where, again, my running backs aren't the most secure, but I actually feel I feel a bit better about it with Damian Williams and Ronald Jones as my, uh, my, my two backups first in line should uh, Raheem Mostert not work out or Mark Ingram is not getting the workload. I thought the two guys I'm between, Chase Edmonds from Arizona, who is the backup to Kenyon Drake, and the possibility, leaving room for the possibility that Edmonds gets more work than we are projecting. Jay, do you have what's your confidence level in Kenyon Drake as a like a sixty as to sixty five percent workhorse? Yeah, I, which if he gets, he's going to be amazing. I'm not. I don't want to discuss sure, how but, great he'll be for fantasy, but what what type of of crack in the door are you leaving? that Chase Edmonds is on the field more than we are projecting. I, I wish Andy was on this episode because he would disagree with me here, but I'm, I'm giving Chase Edmonds a 5% crack to be a All true right. timeshare with Kenyon Drake. This is going to be the Kenyon Drake show. Uh, Chase, I mean, the, the, you know, every team uses multiple running backs. Chase Edmonds will get a few carries a sure. game, and uh, but it will be, you know, like you said, 60-plus percent Drake, and I am, uh, okay. I am so confident in that. Now, we're local. We watch the games. We, you know, have uh, just more eyes and ears around uh, beat writers. And um, Andy thinks that Chase Edmonds will be surprisingly involved. He'll he'll be more involved than people think. So we just disagree on that. Um, but I'm very confident that it's Drake's world. So the Chase Edmonds was the one running back I'm looking at. The second running back I am looking at. It's not going to shock people. It's Antonio Gibson for Washington. Uh, because unlike Chase Edmonds, to me, I think that Antonio Gibson can play his way into a bigger role. Yes, Darius Geis is still there. Geis still projects as the starter, but I believe Antonio Gibson will be used as a pass catcher. They did just lose Kelvin Harmon to injury. Jason is 
moving uncomfortably, shifting back and forth, making faces at me. Uh, and I have no idea what is happening I, right now. Look, you went zero RB, and if you left a zero RB draft without your boy Antonio Gibson, <laughs> I would, I, I, I would be so ashamed of you. And I wanted, to, I, I was hoping for somehow you would just miss his name, uh, forget you his draft- existence. <laughs> And I would draft the heck out of him. There's, I mean, I wanted him so bad with my next pick. So when you were, I should have said, you know, my confidence in Drake is probably sixty percent, sixty percent. It's really going to be the Chase Edmonds show. Oh, well, now, I, now I feel like I'm being pressured even more into the Antonio Gibson pick, which is delightful. So I will just take him. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't blame you there. I mean, he look. He's a two hundred and twenty plus pound back. That's a you know a, a sub four four guy who was a converted wide receiver to a running back who was a third round pick with a nebulous running back situation. Who does when that sound like? David, Jason? David Stinkin Johnson. Johnson. <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's like all the way across the board. It's David Johnson, and yes. so while. David Johnson had far, far, far more production in college and more film that you could look at and be confident in. Um, the film that you do have on Gibson does remind you of of David Johnson. So if he gets the role, I, I mean, this late in a draft, that's what you're going for. So and yes. especially with the zero RB team, come on, man. Yeah, and then an insane running back run happened. In between my two picks, I see... Uh, four picks that were not a running back. So anyone you could think of, they were probably just drafted as we are at the end, which is fine because uh, what I was looking at, uh, if I had not taken Antonio Gibson before Jason had to give me the the final shove to make sure that he made it onto my team, which I'm glad because at this point with that running back run, Gibson would not have made it back. And then my heart would have been shattered into a million pieces. But I was considering grabbing a wide receiver uh and it's i was looking at deshaun jackson who i think is still projecting as the number one wide receiver for philadelphia more and more news of alshon jeffrey maybe starting on the pup the talk is jalen rager is going to be deshaun jackson's backup until the uh until he proves that he can get onto the field so a lot of uh, a lot of buzz that djax uh could still be the number one wide receiver for Philadelphia. So I'm going to take him. That fills out my roster aside from my defense. So I have Kyler Murray, Mark Ingram, Raheem Mostert, Michael Thomas, DJ Moore, George Kittle, DJ Chark. So my process of going wide receiver heavy worked out because those are all, those three guys, those are all top 12 wide receivers for me. And then I got George Kittle in that mix as well. So if I can find a running back, or my, I feel great about this team, but Damian Williams, Ronald Jones, Golden Tate, Deshaun Jackson, Antonio Gibson are on my bench. Jason, your final positional pick, who are you taking? So when I look at my final positional pick, um, there are a handful of guys that I think are okay. Justin Jackson has not gotten his name mentioned hardly at all. Um, he's, yeah, he's interesting. And, and part of the running back run was Joshua Kelly, fourth round rookie for the Chargers, who, look, He's a much bigger guy. Uh, if you're just doing the the simple projecting, then it seems like Josh Kelly should be on the field. He could maybe get goal line work, but at the same time, he still was a fourth round running back, and the hit rate on players taken or running backs taken that late it is very low. Yeah. Um, there's also AJ Dillon, second round pick who could get the goal line work for green Bay. Sure. Um, you know, and, and a couple other options, Chris Thompson at running back who, uh, should get, uh, you know, the, the passing work. And of course, Goathead is out there <laughs> at, at wide receiver. Preston Williams. How did it feel? Is, how, how did it feel coming off the tongue? Felt stupid. It felt, <laughs> it felt dumb and stupid. Oh, come um, on. you know, and, and, uh, so here I've got uh, Preston Williams I like, but I've got Gasicki, um, some other wide receivers. I would have taken DJX without a doubt. He was the highest All right. value on the board. And I'm going to do this because I do this often in drafts. When I get to my last positional pick and I – and all the guys that I was really targeting, you know, uh, Gibson or DJX or uh, the, and those handful of guys that I, I want to uh, grab – when they're all gone, I'm going to pivot and I'm going to take, uh, you know, the best defense available, the second, you know, the, the earlier all round right. 
because it forces other people. Pretty much every player I just named is still available for me, but I got the Ravens who, you know, the, the addition of Calais Campbell, I think will help right. their defense. Um, so I'm looking here between AJ Dillon and Preston Williams. Mm. I am a Preston Williams believer. I don't know that I want to stack him with Kasiki, but if I don't take him here, I don't know that Preston Williams will ever be drafted because you and Andy are not as, as as high on Preston Williams. So I'm going to draft him because it's my team. I get to do what I want. All right. Read off your team, Jay. All right. So my team at quarterback, I've got Carson Wentz. At running back, I've got Ezekiel Elliott, Clyde Edwards, Elaire, David Johnson, uh, Alexander Madison. Um, at wide receiver, we've got Tyler Lockett, Terry McLaurin, um, Michael Gallup, Marvin Jones, Jerry Judy, and Preston Williams with Mike Kosicki at tight end and the Baltimore Ravens at defense. And I grabbed Kansas City because I don't really care right now what, what defense I grab in this mock draft. But that is going to do it for our Saturday show. Hope you gleamed some information. Hope you learned a few things. Make sure you're staying safe out there, everybody. We'll see you next time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Don't forget to visit us on the web at www.thefantasyfootballers.com and follow us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. And Foot Clan, don't forget, Simply Safe's got everything you need to protect your home with none of the drawbacks of traditional home security. You can set it up yourself in under an hour. There's no contract, no pushy sales guy, hidden fees, no fine print. All starts at $15 a month. Try Simply Safe today at simplysafe.com slash footballers. You get free shipping and a 60-day risk-free trial. There's nothing to lose.